Hello, my friends. My name is Post Production Pi, editor in chief for SRLounge.com. Welcome to another installment of our weekly Ordinary to Extraordinary Raw Edit featuring the Lightroom Preset System version 5. Now, as always, we're going to be demonstrating how to create these effects using the preset system first, and then I'm going to be going through each actual developed setting just to help you all understand what's going on and what's going into each look and effect. Now, that way, everyone, whether you have the preset system or you don't, everyone that's watching can benefit from this tutorial. So, if you are interested in learning more, about the SR Lounge Lightroom preset system V5, then just click the link below in the description. It'll take you right over to the SR Lounge store where you can read and research, well, until you're convinced. All right, so let's get started. Now in this video, we're gonna be working on an image that's actually from our HDR DVD workshop. And this image is part of a bracketed sequence, but we're gonna be working on just one of those images and using our vivid HDR presets to really bring out as much detail as possible. Now this won't be quite as nice as what we would have created inside of the HDR workshop where we used our full bracketed sequence. We got a really beautiful and, and kind of flawless overall look, but this is gonna get us close to that. It's gonna get us 90% there for really kind of 10 to 20% of the overall effort effort of what it would take to get it all the way to 100%, all right? So we're getting most of the effect without the majority of the work, and so that's what it's all about. I say that a lot, but that's okay. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna hit I just to show you how this image was shot. We took this actually up in Utah, and this is of my best friend, Aaron, from high school. He's out here uh, fishing. It was the Canon 5D Mark III was our body. We shot this on a 17 to 40 F4L. It was at one tenth of a second at F7.1 and ISO 100. It was, of course, on a tripod, and I did have Aaron actually hold still for this shot. That way he would be still. Everything else wasn't moving. There was no wind at all, so we're only gonna see motion basically in the water. And we kind of have a nice look there. Some people might not like that. I kind of dug it, which is why we shot it with a slower aperture or a slower shutter speed. Because I like some of this motion. It kind of gives it a little bit of, uh, I don't know, extra interest for me. Okay, so the way it was shot, if you check out the histogram, I'm gonna hit I twice just to remove my information. Once again on the histogram, we've maximized the total amount of range that we can possibly get in one single shot. Our highlights are pushed all the way against the edge. Our shadows are pushed against the edge. We're not clipping shadows. We're blowing a tiny bit of highlights, but we have as much range as possible. This is one of those situations where I would absolutely love to be on a D800 because I only need one to two extra stops of range and the D800 would get that extra dynamic range for me and I could have an even better result in this image. But we work with what we have and we get pretty good results either way, so it doesn't really matter. All right, so again, remember when you're shooting these types of images, you're gonna get the best results by compressing and maximizing the tonal range within that one single shot. Okay, let's get started. We're gonna go to our base vivid, and once again, the reason why we dropped the whole landscape title is because this really is, well, it's kind of a landscape and it's kind of a portrait. We didn't want people to feel like if it's a portrait, they have to use soft portrait presets. We're gonna get a great look from this because it's primarily an environmental portrait or a, a landscape image. So it's okay if the colors are a little bit more saturated, it's okay if we go for that look. What I'm gonna do is just go to the HDR medium color, and we're gonna start just flipping through and seeing which one we like better. Now, if we want, we can turn on our profile correction just so we have it enabled. With this image, I kinda of don't like how much it's stretching the edges on this lens, so I'm gonna flip it back off, and then let's start cycling through the different HDR presets. So we have medium, we have heavy, we have max. I think max is gonna be way too far for my taste. If you guys like it, then, well, I'm not judging, I never judge, okay? I'm gonna go with the heavy though because it gives me a more natural overall result. So this actually looks great. This is one click away from where we started and we've already gone from this before to this after. We could call it good, but I never do. I never call it good with just one click. All right, so let's go over here to the exposure. Let's adjust our exposure up a tiny bit just to get Aaron a little bit brighter over here. And what I'm gonna do now beyond this point is just really kind of more fine tuning. So we're gonna make some uh, local area adjustments and, and then we'll actually, let's do those first and then we'll go through all the settings and see what we did afterwards. So over here, we're gonna use a graduated filter. I'm gonna go to a 0.5 stop and this is gonna be really more like a graduated ND over the lens. So we will get a little bit of darkening over these trees but I'm okay with that. I'm actually gonna delete that and do it one more time. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit deeper. I'm okay with that because it's a very natural effect that we see commonly with you know lenses with graduate filters you know over the horizon line. So it's something that we're typically used to seeing. It's not gonna look that off. Okay, so at 0.3, it's a very subtle adjustment anyway. So it's not like we're we're not going for the gold here. We're just going for a little adjustment. All right, now I'm gonna go with a new graduate filter. We're gonna pull this one up from the bottom. Same thing, bringing our attention right into kind of the middle of the frame like that. 
I'm gonna bring this one up a little bit too, just to make it a little bit less uh, apparent. Let's go to 0.4. Okay, that's looking pretty solid right now. Let's go and grab an adjustment brush. And what we're gonna do is flip to our nature color enhancer. And again, if you don't have the preset system, then of course hit pause as we go through and dial this in, okay? So we're just gonna bring it over our shrubs back here. We're gonna bring it over this front area over here. It's just gonna kind of darken and add a little bit of pop to these colors. We get a really nice painterly look with this effect. Now I'm, I'm being careful to not go over places that are have basically strong highlights behind them because I don't want to uh, create any fringing basically. So kind of avoiding above the horizon line. But this is looking solid as is. I, I'm really liking it just the way it is right now. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and see if I want to add a little bit more vignetting and to see if, you know, if I like it, I'm gonna use my presets because it enables me to quickly switch and just kind of look at the different options available. Now I kind of just like it more zeroed out. So let's just leave it zero. I might go to a light, but you know, that's as far as I'm gonna go. I think I like zero just a little bit better. It's a little bit more natural. Okay, so this is looking quite solid now. If we want, we can crop it different. If I were to crop it, you know, I might go with uh, like a 16 by nine or a 16 by 10, maybe a 16 by nine, a little bit tighter and kind of leave us with a little bit more sky up here. So I'm gonna pull it up a little bit so we get a little bit more of the sky, kind of have Aaron in the bottom third of the image, maybe a little bit more down get a little bit of this foreground action that kind of gives a little added interest into this shot. I'm digging it there. And the last thing I might do is let's check out saturation. I can actually use this saturation light plus blues to darken my blues in the sky a little bit. And you see how it added that little pop? Check out how it adds that little pop in there with the blues. And it looks really nice with that. And I love it. I'm gonna actually keep that too. So we made a few adjustments over here. I think we did three clicks on the left side, a couple minor adjustments and some brushing over here on the right. So let's check out overall what our develop settings are. Now, right here we have contrast at plus 75, highlights at negative 75, shadows up, whites down, blacks up. This is that standard heavy uh, HDR look. We haven't gone quite to max, which is gonna take it all the way to 100. We still have a really nice natural overall look to the image. Well, fairly natural. It's, it's a little bit over the top, but hey, I like a little bit over the top. It looks nice. This is my style. All right, so uh, with clarity, we have it boosted to plus 15. We have plus 15 vibrance and plus five saturation, which gives us a little boost to our tones without going too far candied. Again, if it's too much for you, you can always drop those back a little bit and we get a more natural tone. Um, you know, I'm kind of in between on this one. Oops, I bumped the mic again. I'm kind of in between. I might just leave... You know, I kind of like it where it's at actually. And let's leave it where it's at. With our tone curve, we have a subtle S curve again, adding that extra bit of pop. Let's go down and let's check out our color because we do have a little bit of HSL adjustment here. We have that blue drop, which is giving us a little more blue tone in the sky. Okay, so if you want it, you can keep it. If you don't, well, remove it. It's totally fine. By the way, we're up at the butt crack of dawn here to get this shot. So hopefully you appreciate it. <laughs> Ah, you always enjoy it after the moment, but when you're waking up and you're going there to do it, you're like, oh my gosh, why did I do this? Now for sharpening, let's zoom on in and check this out. We have sharpening at 71.5, 1030, our standard settings. It's looking solid. I don't think there's any need to make any adjustments there. Noise reduction is 20. So let's find a little area of shadow like right here. And let's just take a look and see. It's a little bit kind of muddy, but it's not too bad. If we want, we can up it a little bit, but you know, it's... Yeah, I'm gonna probably leave it up just a little bit. Let's make sure we didn't kill too much of our detail elsewhere. It actually looks okay in other places. So let's leave it up at 40 on this one just because we have a little bit of muddy shadows over here if we don't. All right, so we're gonna put that at 40 and then lens vignetting is just left right at zero. We're totally fine with that. We don't need any grain, anything else. And that's it, we're done with this image. We have a great, nice, natural, but vibrant HDR look to this image. And we did it all in that one single raw shot. So we're losing a little bit of highlight detail here and we would have been able to retain a little bit more of a natural look had we done the three uh, the three shot basically blend inside of Photomatix, the, basically what we teach in the HDR workshop. You get a little bit more natural look, slightly more professional, but this is not bad. We're getting 80 to 90% of that look with 20% of the overall effort. So the 80-20 rule, it wins. All right, here's the before, here's the after. Again, before and after, a great effect. And if you guys are interested in learning more about the way we process HDRs, then be sure to check out the HDR workshop as well. That's it for this video, and I'll see you all in the next episode.